and a clarity about things. Amen. They can fully understand what the Lord is saying. And uh, it's important that we know what God has said because uh, we don't want to be stagnated in the longer. We don't want to be at the place uh, this year and next year, year on in the same old stagnated place. Uh, you ought to make your mind up that uh, I'm for real this time. I'm going to get everything that God has available for me. When something is available for you, you ought to take advantage of it. And while God makes stuff available for us and we don't take advantage of it, you need to learn to take advantage of what is available for you. Am I right? And growth is available for you. Development is grow, uh, available for you. Uh, let's go back to the book of Luke, the, uh, the 22nd chapter we're going back there and uh, we talked about that I heard it all day as many people say the desires uh, of the enemy has been counseled because amen and that's a good thing that we have that ability to counsel something when something counsel that means it no more exists am I right counsel and that's also thing that Satan has purposely Amen. Uh, zero on, on many of us, amen, to try to abort what God has invested in our life. He's trying to abort your purpose, right. abort your mandate, and what God, amen, is calling you to do in this hour. It says there in the book of Luke, the, uh, the 22nd chapter, the 31st verse, as we're going, amen, walk in just a minute and then we're going to let you go. Is that all right? all right? Amen. And first of all, he said, and the Lord said, the Lord said, uh, the Lord said and then this season very important that when you say the Lord said make sure the Lord is saying right. don't be up here saying stuff that you know God is saying right. and the Lord ain't saying that the people that's not connected to him right. uh, too many people say the Lord said it, you even know the Lord right. and it simply mean when you say the Lord said it you say the Lord it simply mean you own my life when you look at Lord it means ownership now, the question is, if God is the Lord of your life, why are you not obeying God? He said, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things? Y'all ain't like that. And he says, it's easy to say, he's my Lord. Now, I believe that many of you, he's your Savior. But I don't think you have embraced it. I don't think you have shifted to him being Lord. Because anything that's Lord, it have ownership of your life. And if God have ownership of your life, why are you not committed and loyal to your Lord? I am making it, I'm making it plain to her. I know it, I know it's kind of a uh, touchy thing, but, but what I'm saying to you, he said, Lord, Lord, the ownership. When he gonna become Lord of our life, not just Savior. When he became Savior, but he just rescued you. He brought you out. But when he become Lord, he owns your life. And only your life, he's not forcing your life. Because I own you, you still have a choice. That's why he said, choose you this day. Who you going to serve? He can own you, but you got you got to make the choice just to do what he said. Come on, he ain't going to force you. But he's going to make it so hard for you. But you got to do what he said. The book says, and Jesus learned obedience by the thing that he had to suffer. See, suffering got a way to get you to a place of obedience. When you suffer some loss, suffer, amen, help, suffer, he you, you're going to get to a place of, oh, I'm going to obey whatever you say. Because it's easy to make vows to God when things are going bad for you. But I want you to make a vow when things are going good for you. Anybody that say, Lord, if you get me out of this, how many of them said, all of us have, hey, God, if you get me out of this, if you do this for me this time, Lord, if you get that from it over there, I promise you, you can't amount. See, you made a promise to God, but be honest, you didn't, you didn't hold to your promise. God hold to his promise because he's not a man that he lied. Never said a man that he shall repent. If God said, should he gonna do what he said? So he held on to here while you didn't hold on to yours. So if you make a vow to God, you got to hold to that vow. And when you should say, I made a vow to the Lord, but I won't turn back, y'all want me to see? So you made a vow to the Lord, but you turn back. You turn away from your excitement. You you turn away from your commitment. You turn away from your loyalty. You turn away from it. So you didn't hold up to your vow. But you want to go, God, you say, God, God, you say you were going to do it. And then come to pass. But what about you told God what you're going to do? And what you said you're going to do, you didn't come to pass what you said you were going to do. So Lord, Lord, Lord. So when you position yourself and say he's your Lord, make sure you put yourself in position for him to control you, to, 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 to lead you and to guide you. 
make sure that that's that that's the that's the that is the confession that you have as in being the Lord. Now watch it. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan. We talked about Satan. We told you that Satan in the Greek represents adversary. Faith come by what? Hearing. So it might be saying, I might be seeing redundant, but amen. Until I get you to a place of faith and believing, you got to keep hearing. Faith come by hearing, not praying. Praying ain't gonna get you no faith. You can pray, but don't mean you're gonna have faith. All the time they said, they said, Lord, help us. I want to believe. You be praying a lot, but you ain't hearing a lot. You can continue to pray, not hear. He told them to watch and pray. But you get a not intense place. So the flesh is weak, but the spirit indeed is willing. Come on, so you know what problem is? We ain't hearing enough. Because we, we might be hearing, but we ain't heeding. Because there come a time that you hear, you need to heed to something. There come a time you got to quit being here only to see yourself. And so of being a doer. Y'all ain't liking that part right there. Doing of the word. So Satan uh, is, is represented as the adversary, the dragon. He was not called Satan in heaven, right? Because he was what? The archangel. And his position in heaven was to praise. He was the praise in heaven. Now, if Satan was the praise of heaven, and Satan knew what moves God, now if Satan was created to praise God, why you think God still don't want to praise? If his assignment was just to praise, and then if you don't like to give that to him, what would you crave to do? And you both be created in his image, in his life. So when we when we ask you to praise God, then you say you belong to God. Yeah. And then we say you don't, amen, because we ain't seeing no praise. All right, now. And if praise is coming for the upright, yeah. come on, and you say you right with God, why it ain't something regular that you right, oh, do? And see, if he say inhabit, so what the word inhabit mean, it means to take the light. Now, my question is, you want God to delight in what you do, but God want to delight in something that you do. And the only thing he asks him for a prayer, why it's so hard? Is he prays and not predicated on what you feel it or when he do something for you? It's an automatic thing that we do. You need to tell me you got to wait till a prophet to come to pass? Many folk in there to testify, amen, when something big have come. Uh, when, when, when he, yeah, he prophesied that thing came to pass, then you praise God. But see, you need to pray before the prophecy come to pass. Because you pray to it and speed up the process. So if you ain't know something big before you can pray, you're not already missing. God might not even let that release. Because he know the only way you're going to pray unless he give you a house a call. And that's why he ain't going to give it to you. Because he know your relationship ain't based on what you can do with him. It's based on what he can do for you. That's why the devil couldn't break Joel down. Because Joel went with God for what God was doing for him. He said, Nicky came out into the world. And Nicky said, I'm return. The Lord give it. And the Lord take it away. I'm still going to bless him. But I got it. I'm going to bless him if I don't got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that lets you know he went with God. Yeah. For what God could do it for him. Come on, somebody. He was with God because he loved God. And see, when you love God, it's a difference between liking something and loving something. A lot of people like what he do for them. Because when he stop doing for you, you stop doing for him. Y'all ain't him. Right? When he stop blessing you, you stop doing you. You don't even bless the house no more. But when you love God, it don't matter if you don't got nothing in your pocket. You're still going to get out to pray. If you don't feel it, you can feel bad in your body. Because you know it's right that you present yourself. I live a sacrifice. Hold it. And they suffer what I got. Which is your reason for service. I feel like I got to get out of here. So, so this, yeah, so the thing about it is that uh, the problem we have is, is many folks uh, uh, they they see a weight on something big to happen for them to really bring loose. You wait on something. You wait on an earthquake to hit you. You wait on a feel some some type of way before you finally just get off and praise God. Uh, uh, you 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 you, you waiting to somebody not looking at you before you praise God and amen. But, but but that's 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 not real because when it's real, when it's real, what you feel? Come on, somebody, you're not waiting for nothing big to happen. You praising God because it's already happened. 
it happened in the spirit. You expect it from the manifest in the natural. Because a lot of things ain't gonna be manifest in the natural if it ain't established in heaven first. Y'all ain't heard it. Heaven got to validate what he do in earth right now. Oh, I wish I had some. See, if heaven had not validated, it'll never not to manifest in an action. And you wonder why? Because heaven, what is heaven really thinking about you? What is really heaven really thinking about your performance? If God really pleased with your praise, can you love to say that you love him and he will please with your performance? Hey, call y'all heaven here. Glory to God. I'm almost through my attention. Satan, Satan here, he's, 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 he's considered here as the enemy of mankind. Satan is considered uh, our enemy. He's our enemy. And the reason why he is our enemy, because he accused us before God day and night. Matter of fact, he's the accuser of the brethren. And look at your neighbor and say, every time you try to accuse me of something, you take him on that Satan spirit. Because he's accused of uh, the brother. He always trying to accuse yes, your son. Yes, trying to find fault in everything yes, you do. Yes, yes. Amen. Just every time you can't never see the good in you. Amen. Have you ever known somebody every time you're growling? There's always something negative. Just, just, I mean, I mean you, you, you're on the phone with him. Something negative is going to come out. I mean, I mean, if you get a positive conversation out there one minute, that means, oh, well, you know God did something. But, but every time you look around, you can't find nothing. Folks, look around. In the ministry, you can't find nothing positive about the ministry. Y'all ain't heard. Every time you look around, that's negative. That ain't right. This ain't right. This ain't right. Oh, you're a miserable somebody. That means you need some deliverance. The first thing you need to deliver for yourself. Because there ought to be something good that you can find out. Somebody. The Lord found something good out of you. If you decide to use your wicked and your critical self, that's what you have to give God Hey, you don't deserve that word you have. You don't deserve that power you possess. You don't deserve that. He lets you use them. You mean to tell me you want to come up in here and look around and find fault? That's why you can't even tell people can't get in the church. Because they're looking around and seeing this and looking around. But if you come to the church and get to my own Jesus, you can't have a good time. It's going to be hard to get to my own Jesus. Everything you're looking at is negative. I can find positive out of anything in the city. Who is the enemy of? Mankind, he's, he's a devil, he's a trap, he's, he's a fallen angel. And he looks for opportunity, he's accused of the brother. Satan, Satan, someone says Satan, watch it, has desire. That's passing. Desire. He doing everything that he can to make that desire come to pass. That, that assigned to your life was the desire to take you out. Sickness just didn't show up for nothing. That was a, a release from the enemy. And it was a desire to shut you down. It was an assignment for the enemy. The enemy lost that out against you. That job you lost was designed to shut you down to the point that you would never believe God for nothing else. I would say it, 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 that that you were facing that that you it was a desire to stop your operation because Satan didn't want you to ever bounce back. He didn't want you to believe God. Matter of fact, he had already wrote you off. He said, "You go this time, I got him. I'm, I'm going to get to the point they're going to stop. They, they ain't going to never. They may bounce back." That was his desire. He was so strong in his heart that he desired to see you fall. Desired to never see you reach your full potentials in God. He desired that if you would never praise God, that's why he tried to shut your mouth up. We got the devil say the devil don't got no power. He got power. He when he was kicked out of heaven, he didn't lose no power. He just lost the light. Got to hit me up in here because if he didn't have power, why you shut up every Sunday? If he didn't have no power, why it's hard for you to open your mouth? If he didn't have no power, why you can't shout and you got the glory? Something keeping your mouth back in God. God wants you to open up your mouth. So the question is, what's shutting your mouth? Got to hit me. What spirit is that that's shutting your mouth? Won't let you sing and give God the praise? What got you going to isolate yourself from the saints when he said you're inherited? Because the Lord knows that a 
y'all sanctified. Y'all don't want to have no church. I know y'all don't want to have no church. I'm about to let you go about 10 minutes. We are easy to say that Satan don't have no power. But, but I question that because I'm looking at your performance. I'm looking at you can't break through, through certain situations. You can't even break through when folks are looking at you funny. You can't even break through. 